Great, thank you. So I'll turn this back over to Paige, who's gonna give us a little bit more context for today's discussion. Great, thanks, Mike. So this slide might look familiar to those who were at the first workshop, but it has a small update on where we're at in the Burien Climate Action Plan. Um, as a reminder, in 2020, we spent the year developing the 2019 Greenhouse Gas Inventory. And if you're curious about what that entails for more information, that's on our website. Um, right now, we are in the middle of developing our strategies and actions for the Climate Action Plan. And we should have um, those the next set of strategies and actions available um, at the end of summer or early fall. Uh, we hope to have a draft plan in the fall of 2021 and incorporate the community feedback that we get tonight. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to finalize and adopt the Burien Climate Action Plan by the end of this year and begin the monitoring and implementation of the plan in early 2022. Next slide, please. So this is a vision statement that we developed at the first community workshop based on the feedback we received over mural, um, over Zoom chat, and that was shared verbally. Um, what we picked out from all the feedback we got was the, this vision statement here. In the future, we want to see a climate smart and climate resilient Burien that preserves its cultural diversity, its close knit community, and its green spaces while increasing affordable housing options expanding accessible public transportation, and expanding social services and publicly funded subsidy programs that make Burien a more equitable place to live. Next slide, please. From that vision statement, we were able to develop five different focus areas for the Climate Action Plan. Each of these focus areas looks at a different part of our community and uh, identifies areas in which we can address impacts from climate change. Uh, the five focus areas include transportation and land use, buildings and energy, materials and consumption, water and natural systems, and community resilience and well-being. Next slide, please. Um, so tonight we're going to be taking a look at the initial list of draft strategies and actions. Um, and we developed these strategies and actions um, over the course of the last couple months after the first community workshop. An initial comprehensive list of potential actions were compiled and developed through a review of existing Burien policies and programs through the analysis of the greenhouse gas inventory and wedge analysis and a review of sustainability uh, plans around the region. Just going to stop my video. I can see myself lagging. Apologies for that. Um, this list that we developed originally was um, refined down based on the feedback we got at the first community workshop from uh, discussions internally with city staff and community stakeholders, and then uh, through the team of consultants that you're seeing here tonight. Uh, next slide, please. I will give this back to Mike now. Great. Um, so we're, I'm gonna just going to quickly run through um, the five focus areas, the goals, why they're important, and the strategies that we're going to be discussing tonight. So um, the goals for the transportation and land use focus area is going to be focused on reducing transportation emissions and increased trips made by walking, biking, and transit. We also want to support neighborhood nodes uh, that provide easy access to transit, amenities, jobs, and housing. Um, next slide, please. So um, a lot of the context and why it is important. So transportation accounts for about half of Burien's greenhouse gas emissions, with 48% of the city's total emissions tied to transportation. Um, these emissions come primarily from driving cars and light trucks, particularly single occupancy passenger vehicles, which account for 52% of all of the transportation emissions itself. Specifically, some of the strategies to, within this focus area include transition to the use of energy efficiency vehicles, reduce transportation emissions associated with government uh, operations. We also want to enable and provide multiple modes of green transportation. And we want to encourage density and mixed land use in strategic areas. Next slide, please. So the second focus area will be on buildings and energy. 
So uh, the focus area for this is supporting efficient building uh, standards and expanding renewable energy production and use. And so energy related greenhouse gas emissions come from electricity, natural gas, and other fuels used in homes, businesses, and industrial processes. In Burien, commercial, residential, and industrial energy accounts for about half or 47% of the city's total emissions. To uh, address some of these emissions, uh, the strategies include advancing the decarbonization of buildings, increasing the ener energy efficiency in city owned buildings and other infrastructure, and transitioning to the use of renewable energy to eliminate fossil fuel, fossil fuel use um, whenever possible. So the next third focus area tonight is materials and consumption. And the primary goal of this focus area is reducing community waste genera generation and moving towards zero waste of resources. So waste in landfills, especially food waste, is a major source of methane, uh, which is particularly uh, uh, problematic because it has over 80 times the potential of carbon dioxide to retain heat within the atmosphere. Um, upstream emissions tied to purchasing and consumption can also be a significant source of overall emissions as well. And so even though solid waste only accounts for a small percentage of Burian's emissions, we also have to consider the entire life cycle of products of what we consume and of what we use. Emissions from the creation of the product, time spent during the supply chains, so like packaging um, and shipping, um, as well as transportation to Burien should all be considered when we think about sustainable consumption. And so the three primary strategies to address this is one, reducing waste from city purchasing and operations. Two, increasing the diversion of community waste while reducing contamination within the waste streams. And three is promoting a circular economy. Our fourth, fourth focus area tonight is about water and natural systems. The goals of this focus area include preserving the health of native habitats and enhancing ecosystem health, as well as enhancing natural drainage systems. Uh, this is particularly important because water is vulnerable to climate change impacts. Uh, we know impacts such as warmer temperatures, changing precipitation patterns, and less snowpack um, will cause more frequent and prolonged water shortages. We also know uh, events like extreme storms or extreme rainfall can also overwhelm Burien's wastewater and stormwater infrastructure. Additionally, climate impacts like wildfires can also affect downstream water quality. Meanwhile, natural systems, including trees, grasses, soils, naturally store and capture carbon from the atmosphere, making them a valuable tool to also combat climate change. Uh, the three primary strategies within this focus area include protecting and supporting native habitats and open spaces, protecting stormwater infrastructure and expanding green infrastructure, and protecting the quality and flow of water resources. Finally, the fifth focus area is community resilience and well being. And so the three goals of this focus area include strengthening the capacity to support climate action, ensuring equitable access to parks, green space, and recreational services, and focus investments on communities that experience disproportionate climate impacts. I think, um, in particular, this is one area that. Uh, the first workshop really informed on the development of these additional goals and strategies as well. Um, so why is it important? We know climate change can worsen current areas of vulnerability within the community. Burien already faces a variety of climate related threats, which include heat waves and extreme precipitation events. And so with these impacts and with future climate change, it can affect our safety and health, as well as our quality of life and exacerbate existing inequities. And so to address um, these uh, areas of concern, we want to build awareness within the community around climate-related impacts. We want to improve city staff knowledge 
of and capacity for their role in climate action. We want to increase and protect green spaces and natural areas within the community. And we want to enhance the resilience of populations that will be disproportionately impacted by climate change.